Welcome back to this week's episode of Thoroughly Entertained. Please go to our website, thoroughlyentertained.com, and sign up for our summer movie guide so you know what's happening every week at the theater. Now this week, Chris and I went and saw Despicable Me 2 and the new Disney film, The Lone Ranger. retirement in order to stop a villain from destroying the world. Alright, so this week our question of the week is, what is your favorite animated sequel? My favorite is Toy Story 3, what about you? Mine would have to be Monsters University. I really liked, really liked it, so. Yeah, and I think for both films they came up with kind of a new, unique way to tell the story with the same characters, and I thought they were both brilliant. Alright, so this week we saw Despicable Me 2, and Krista, what was your favorite thing about it? It would clearly have to be the Minions. They were hysterical, like butt-gusting laughter. Butt-gusting? Butt-gusting. <laughs> <laughs> that would be even funnier, actually. Butt-gusting? <laughs> you know what I mean. But it was hilarious. Um, and they were funny, and their, their, their role in this movie is much larger. Now, yeah, absolutely. I, was, I was seeing the movie with my nephews and a different brother and his yeah. wife, and everyone was hysterically laughing. And so I think that sort of elevated it for me. Yeah, there's a scene at the end of the film where they're, where four of the minions are dressed in white and they're singing uh, All For Once I Swear. And it is one of the funniest things I have ever seen. <laughs> the uh, stroking of the flower. Yeah, the stroking of the flower and all the romantic. <laughs> and the fact that all, everything they say is nonsense even, even makes it funnier. Yeah, the minions are absolutely hilarious. Whoever came up with the concept of the minions for the first film, cut that guy a check. He deserves more money than you're paying him. But... Uh, I, that was obviously the big standout of the movie for me. Was there anything you didn't like in particular? Um, what I didn't like about the movie was that the villain wasn't particularly villainy or evil. Um, like, I wanted more emphasis on that. I would have liked the roles of the girls to be a little bit larger, too, because yeah, the relationship too. between Gru and, the, and his daughters was really the heart and the, the charm of movie number one, and so I would have liked even more of that for movie number two. Yeah, I thought they could have done a little bit more with that. For me, I really felt like there wasn't enough of a story in this film. I think it, it almost felt like they made it because they were tired of sitting on the Despicable Me property and they were worried that people were going to start to forget about it if they didn't make a sequel. And it really felt rushed to me. It didn't feel like there was a, a very full, fleshed out story. The villain is kind of a cipher. He's not a real, full character in any sort of way. Um, and, and all the new people that they added into the story were just less interesting than, than the people in the first film, I thought. Uh, even though the voice actors were good, Steve Coogan as Silas Ramsbottom, <laughs> like, you know, again, one laugh, and that's all he gives you for the whole film. I mean, I felt like the only thing that, that stood out of the film was the minions for me. So what did you end up giving the movie? Uh, I ended up only giving it a C-, minus simply for the fact that I went into it with really high expectations. I loved the first one, the trailers for this one looked really funny, and I thought there was so much more potential with these characters than they, than they utilized that I could only give it a C-. minus. I gave it a solid B. It is an entertaining movie. If you're a parent with children, they're going to love it and think they're hilarious. And you will laugh too, as all the adults were laughing in the movie theater. And I thought it was a solid movie. Was it, was it as good as Monsters University? Absolutely not. Yeah, it definitely suffers in that comparison. Um, but it was still a strong sequel. It wasn't the world's worst. Yeah. In Disney's The Lone Ranger, Texas lawman John Reed joins forces with a mystical Comanche named Tonto to avenge the death of his brother. Alrighty, now on to The Lone Ranger. Scott, what did you like about this movie? Um, I thought the action sequences were pretty good. I thought Gore Verbinski did a, did a good job with the sets and the costumes and all those things. And I, and I liked Johnny Depp as Tonto more than I expected I would. Yeah, I was not looking forward to this movie, and I was especially not looking forward to Johnny Depp's portrayal in this movie. I just have a really big problem with minority characters being played by non-minorities. Like, they have Native Americans in the movie, so I don't know why they didn't cast a Native American in the role of Tonto. And so going in with that sort of idea, I was not looking forward to it, but he is definitely the star of the movie. Yeah. He provides the humor, he you know, like, and so that was more enjoyable than I expected it to be. Right. And I too thought the action sequences, the clever sort of staging of the train sequences was strong, and they broke up the action sequences. One strong piece at the beginning, then developed story, and then more as the movie um, continued. What didn't you like? Um, everything else. <laughs> uh, sadly, um, I didn't think, I thought Army Hammer was flat and 
charmless as as John Reed the Lone Ranger. I thought the movie dragged. It was so long. I keep harping on this, but every movie we've seen that has been a big budget film this summer has been at least 15 minutes too long. This movie was a half, half hour, hour too yeah, long. Easily. Like they could have done so much more with less in this film. And again, like with, without Johnny Depp's little touches of humor and the horse, the horse was funny. Yeah. Without those two things, this would have been pretty close to unwatchable for me for how long and tedious it felt. I completely agree with you. It is at least a half an hour too long. I felt that the story was too cumbersome and clunky. And because they try to tell this very convoluted large story with underlying elements of deceit, there was very little heart and very little emotion. And I agree with Army Hammer. He is an attractive guy, but the last two major starring roles, Mirror Mirror and now Lone Ranger, he just does not have that extra charisma that is necessary to carry a big budget movie like this. And I think he needs to like try doing some character work first and really right. develop that because he was fine in the social network. Yeah, he was all right. Um, but he like he just is whatever he he just missing whatever he needs to have to do a large role like that. And it's disappointing because he should be better or you hope that he should be better. Well, and a good comparison is last week we saw White House Down, which you know, for all the criticisms of that movie, that the, the plot's ridiculous and those types of things, like, it's an enjoyable movie mainly because you like Channing Tatum so much. Right. Because Channing Tatum is a charismatic, interesting guy who it's, it's hard not to like him when you see him in a movie. Army Hammer just doesn't have that little bit extra that whatever it takes you need to, to be a movie star. And I think he'll really suffer if he keeps getting thrust into these big roles before he's ready for them because he's not ready right now. Yeah, it was just not what I was hoping for no, in a large... The least. It reminded me more of the Wild West, the Wild Wild West Ooh. with um, Will Smith, which was just a... Yeah, it was kind of a turd. And, um, yeah, it just wasn't a strong movie. Scott, what did you give this one? I ended up giving it a D. I mean, honestly, without those little touches of humor and without, you know, those those couple train sequences that were interesting, really, this movie was two hours of... Two of and a half hours. Two, <laughs> yeah, well, but I'm saying, like, you take there's a half hour of good stuff and there's two hours of bad. And so I can't give it anything higher than a D. Yeah, I give it a C. Or a C minus? Uh, I hope I a C minus. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, I will never see it again. Yeah. So it wasn't that entertaining. No, not at all. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Thoroughly Entertained. Next week, we'll be watching Pacific Rim and Grown Ups 2. As always, visit our website at thoroughlyentertained.com and make sure to sign up for our summer movie guide so you know what's happening every week at the theater. And as always, join us next week on our quest to be thoroughly entertained.